don't don't try this at home. It is so cold. <laughs> okay, so I'm sitting on the heater to keep me warm. And as I do that, I'm going to recap a talk I gave last week to the CF. The opening illustration says, tell me you're Asian without telling me you're Asian. Apparently this is a trend that's going on right now on TikTok. This is a manto bouquet. You can give this to your sweetheart. You are my manto, my deep fried manto. You make me happy with chili crab. There's also a cha siu version, not hala. Number two, chili oil McFlurry. A McFlurry goes in and McFlurry goes out. The chili oil helps it to come out. Maybe you can try to make this yourself. Some lao kama. Put it on your corneto. Don't, don't try this at home. Number three, Red Bull bubble tea. When you don't want to have milk inside your tea, instead you want to have a heart attack. You're the oxma. Caffeine plus calories. This is how you know. We find that phrase again and again in John's letters. This is how you know or in Malay, ini macam lu tau. And in 1 John chapter 5 verse 13, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know you have eternal life. Meaning you Christians, I'm writing to you Christians so that you you know that you are Christians. That's uh, what he's saying. There are three points. Lu tau, lu ikot, lu suka. You know, you obey, you love. This is how you know. It's a recap of 1 John chapters 1 and 2. Here's 1 John uh, chapter 1 and verse 1. That which was from the beginning, talking about God from the beginning, created everything in the beginning, talking about Jesus and how Jesus became flesh because John describes him as something that he could see, he could hear, and he could even touch. I wonder if you could smell him. Smell Jesus. If you were John in Jesus' day, you could play badminton with Jesus. Jesus was a real living human being. That's what he's saying. Jesus really lived. But also, John says in verse 7, Jesus really died. Verse 7, the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Talking about the reality of his life, of his death, and of his humanity. Some people were saying, Jesus being God, that's okay. I love that. That's good. But Jesus being man, that's bad because man is sin sinful, evil, man is less than God. But John says, no, no, no. Jesus' blood means he really died as a human being. His blood has this ability to forgive us of our sins. Verse 7, cleanses from all our sins. It's a kind of debate. Which is the real Jesus? This one or is it that one? It's like cha kway tiao, rice noodles. Ooh, very good. Wish I could have some now. There's the cha kway tiao and there's pinang cha kway tiao, the real thing. You know, there's curry mee and there's pinang curry mee. How do you know it's the real thing, the real pinang curry mee? Well, you have the old uncle slaving over the hot stove. Sweat is going into the cha kway tiao. That's why you don't need MSG. It's the wok. Hey, that's how you know. This is the real thing. To know the real Jesus, you have to have the wok hey of the gospel. It's the cross. The blood of Jesus Christ is the wok hey of the gospel. And this is how you know that Jesus Christ and his death really pays for our sin, forgives us of our sin. If you know that, John says, you are the real thing. And that's number one. That's how you know. Secondly, it's how you obey, how you follow, how you keep his command. Chapter 2 and verse 3, by this we know that we've come to know him if we keep his commandments. Today's talk was supposed to be faith in action. The topic they gave me, put a picture of this guy over here. This guy is Abit Liu. He's very famous in Malaysia. He's not a Christian. He's actually a Muslim Ustaz cleric who goes around doing so much good. He gives a lot of money to charity and helps lots of poor people. So much so that the Malaysian government, this minister says, I'm so embarrassed. Abit Liu does more good than me and I'm in the government. And when you hear words like faith in action, many people think we need to be the Christian Abit Liu doing lots and lots of good, lots of charity, showing lots of love. You know, that's good. It's a really, really good thing if that's what you take out of this talk. But you know, I think John has already showed us what kind of action to take. Chapter 1 verse 7, walk in the light as he is in the light. Chapter 1 verse 9, confess your sins. He is faithful. Chapter 2 verse 6, walk in the way that he walked. John is saying, do something in response to something else. We are responding to Jesus but specifically we're responding to his commands, to his words, to his gospel. Meaning Jesus right now, as I give this talk, we look at the Bible, he is speaking to us, his commandments. And he's calling for us to respond, respond to what he's saying. He's, he's communicating with us 
in this relationship. The illustration of playing badminton with Jesus again. <laughs> Imagine Jesus serving you with a shuttlecock. As he comes to you, just go, ooh, let it go past you. John is saying, pick up your racket, serve back, respond to Jesus in this relationship. This faith in action is talking about this readiness, this willingness to respond. Jesus, you're speaking to me right now. I don't want to let your words go past me. In this Bible study and this talk, I want to see and to hear and to know what you're saying to me and I want to respond. And the main thing in those three verses we looked at is responding to his word in faith, taking seriously sin, confessing it before God, knowing that he died for me on the cross and therefore I want to trust in that always, not in my works, but in his death for me on the cross. So it's that willingness, that obedience, that I want to respond to everything he's saying to me. And that's faith in action. That's that willingness, that wantingness to, to respond. That's number two. Finally, number three, it's love. It's love. And here it's not talking about love for Jesus, but love for one another. And this is chapter two, verse nine. Whoever says that he is in the light, but hates his brother, he's still in the darkness. And this is scary. <laughs> this is scary because it says he is still in the darkness. He says he's in the light, but actually he's in the darkness. And you know that because he hates that brother over there. Oh, he's so irritating. I can't stand it. But he, you know, his theology might be good. He might be very, very obedient, but if he fails in this one test, he, he fails the whole thing. And that's that, that's really scary because here in Cambridge, at least you have a lot of people who are really smart, who really know their Bibles, lead Bible studies, and they are so sincere in wanting to obey God. But love doesn't seem to be very, very important. Here's John saying, you fail that, you fail the whole thing. But also verse 10 gives us an encouragement. Whoever loves his brother and a abides in the light and in him there is no cause for stumbling. Meaning here is this brother who is in the light and you can tell he's in the light because he loves his brothers and his sisters. He's not talking about that perfectly popular and loving guy but he still tries and he knows how hard it is to love one another. But because he's trying, learning and he's growing, he does not stumble one another. You notice that? You know, no cause for stumbling. That means it's not like the first guy where you go, how come his theology is so tiring? But then he doesn't see to like anyone in the group. He just wants to say stuff to show off how smart he is. But this other guy, he takes God's command to love so seriously. He finds it really difficult, but he's trying to love the most difficult person in the group. So yeah, that love test. So let's pull it all together. I'm going to show this other picture here. See you at the Pasa Malam. <laughs> the Malaysians will get this as a running joke because one week ago there was this rule that said you cannot meet anyone for Chinese New Year. And they said, oh, we can meet you in the night market in the Pasa Malam. And all this is to say that Chinese New Year this year does not feel like Chinese New Year. You can't what together, you can't meet together. It does not feel like that celebration. And John is writing to people, to Christians who do not feel like they are Christians. Or maybe it's sin, done something, and they keep going back to it and go, oh no, why do I still commit that sin? Or maybe someone has stumbled them, you know, why is that person so unloving? Or maybe it's the Bible study, why is this talk so difficult? I don't understand, this is such a difficult book to understand. John writes to such Christians to encourage them. He keeps calling them dear children, Uncle John, a boy, a girl, trying to encourage them to remind them that God loves you as his children. And he says in chapter 3, see what kind of love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God. And he says, that's what you are. That's who you are. And you say, how do I know? How do I know? And this is how you know these simple tests, not of what you do, but what God has done through you. Number one, do you believe that God sent his son to die for you? Yeah, I think I do. Do you know that God is speaking to you right now in his word, calling you to follow him? Yeah, I, I do realize that this God's word speaking to me, speaking to us as his church and finally do you see that these are your brothers and sisters in Christ and it's hard it's hard to love everyone but at least you turned up at today's zoom meeting and and you know that that counts that counts and as hard as for you to see that God sees that and God wants you to know that you are his children because he says there that is who we are that is who you are. I hope that's encouraging to you. Now, why don't we end with a prayer? Heavenly Father, thank you so much for these reminders. And please keep reminding us that you're our Father. Remind us that Jesus Christ died for our sins. Remind us that he's speaking to us always in his word. And thank you so much for our brothers and sisters who love us and whom we have that opportunity to respond in that love and generosity of Christ. Thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.